In our next lesson on transcription and RNA from chapter 21, we want to turn our attention to the steps of elongation and of termination in the process of transcription. RNA polymerase appears to abort transcription and thereby produce short transcripts of about 12 nucleotides. In other words, it begins but cannot proceed for a good portion of the time. This suggests a transition from initiation to elongation, and this led to studies to prove what is that transition. It was found that transcription factor 2b actually ac occupies part of the active site and thereby blocks progress. In other words, RNA polymerase can begin, but it can't proceed so long as TF2B is blocking that active site. It must be displaced in order for RNA polymerase to extend the RNA molecule. Also, the exit channel for RNA appears to be partly blocked. So what is the signal for this transition? It involves the C-terminal domain of RNA polymerase, and that's in our illustration here. On the left we have initiation, we have RNA polymerase in green, the extended region is the C-terminal domain, the general transcription factors in orange and mediator in yellow, and they're initiating transcription. On the C-terminal domain of RNA polymerase, there are 52 repeats of a 7 amino acid sequence that includes three serine residues. You do not need to know these seven amino acids, only that there's a high number of serine residues. These serine residues are phosphorylated. So with three serines in each of these seven amino acid sequences and 52 repeats of them, there are multiple places for the C-terminal domain of RNA polymerase to be phosphorylated. What is the effect of this? That's illustrated at the top of the screen here. As these serine residues are phosphorylated, it, RNA polymerase can no longer bind mediator complex. RNA polymerase dissociates from both the general transcription factors and mediator. It proceeds to read the DNA template and extend the RNA strand pictured here in red. Mediator dissociates. It leaves the general transcription factor still occupying that promoter region. These can now initiate another round of transcription with a new RNA polymerase and a new mediator bound. What about the process of termination? Well, there are two mechanisms in prokaryotic systems. One is row independent. That is, it is independent of any other factor. The termination signal is actually in the sequence of the RNA transcript itself. A hairpin or stem loop structure forms that is followed by a stretch of U residues. And that's pictured at the top of the screen here. The stem is a region of complementary base pairing within the molecule that is intramolecular. And the loop or hairpin portion is that region that is not base paired. At the end of that stem loop structure, you can see the string of U residues. What is the effect of this on RNA polymerase? And that's pictured at the bottom of the screen here. RNA polymerase is reading the template strand and synthesizing the RNA. So the first nucleotides that are added are at the bottom of the screen here. Those more recently added are in this region of the DNA-RNA hybrid helix. As the RNA molecule is transcribed through the terminator signal, that stem loop structure forms, and that's illustrated here. That causes RNA polymerase to pause. As the U residues are synthesized, now we have that hybrid helix between the deoxy A residues and the ribonucleotide U residues. Remember, those are only two hydrogen bonds, a very unstable hybrid helix in any case, and that causes the whole complex to dissociate. So in other words, the termination signal is in the sequence of the transcript itself. Nothing else is needed to terminate in the situation. The other type of termination in prokaryotes is rho dependent. In other words, it depends on an external factor rho protein.
It binds, as illustrated in the figure at the bottom of the screen here, to the messenger RNA and it moves along faster than RNA polymerase. It eventually catches up to RNA polymerase and it has helicase activity, so it separates the RNA from the DNA and that dissociates the complex. So in both cases, the RNA polymerase moves ahead. The double helix is destabilized, either by the presence of the stem loop structure or by the helicase activity of rho protein, and so the RNA dissociates. In our next video lesson, we'll start to look at how RNA is processed during and following transcription by examining the steps involved in preparing eukaryotic mRNA for translation into protein.